Now the last part of this series of lectures for this part is called Evolution of Curriculum or Curriculum from the Historical Perspective. Curriculum is created by people based on the circumstances and beliefs during the period of, of during a particular period of time. The curriculum is reflective of the political ideologies, economic system, religious conviction and and most importantly the conception of knowledge of a particular point of time. Uh, in in Malaysia, uh, we started off. The question is, what do you? Th in the Malaysian education system is quite unique in the sense that we don't have very well documented rich tradition like the way you would see in the textbook describing the American system. Because in many cases we had a quantum leap, we had a traditional uh, education system through the Scola Pondos, which we will talk shortly. Talk about it shortly. And then suddenly we were colonized, right? In some cases we are still, and many of you all would like to be colonized continuously. But we were colonized, so upon which the colonial uh, masters or the British introduced their form of education. So what happened was from the scholar point of view, we had a quantum leap, we suddenly jumped up there. And then the evolution of Malaysian education continued after 1950s or from the 50s. So from, I guess, from, from the 1600s onwards, 1600s, onwards, there is not much uh, innovation that was taking place locally. It was more, there was just two parallel systems. There was a religious Kuala Pondo perspective and then there was the secular colonial education that was provided through the missionary schools. And only after, from the 50s onwards, the Malaysian curriculum became uniquely Malaysian and subsequently there is an evolution for that. Now, Scola Pondo itself was uh, historically documented from the Hikayat Abdullah, uh, Abdullah's work. Uh, they were predominantly uh, considered madrasas where they were teaching. Uh, their main body of knowledge was reveal, Islamic revealed knowledge. Okay. Now, in the 50s, uh, things started changing. Uh, British itself introduced secular education to Malaysia as early as 1816. I think the first English uh, language school that was established in Malaysia was the Penang Free School that was founded in 1816. The second school was Malacca High School, subsequently Anglo-Chinese School in Klang was the third. And many of the schools still hold a prestige in, in the Malaysian education scene. Now, uh, Sultan Idris Training College was the first teacher training college established in Malaysia to, to holistically produce Malaysian teachers in the Malaysian context. The college was established with the purpose of producing Malay teachers particularly. R. J. Wilkinson helped to establish the Malay College of Kuala Kangsa in 1905 and it was aimed to educate the Malay elites, particularly the royal families of the nine states. Missionary and various Christian denominations such as Roman Catholic, uh, La Salle Brothers, Marius Brothers, Seventh-day Adventists, Anglicans, were, as well as the Methodists, also started a whole bunch, a whole series of schools around the country. Most of them were single-sex, uh, single-sex schools. Although nowadays, um, although these days, um, many schools have gone away from this perception of school needing to be uh, single-sex, and there is a more bigger shift towards a co-ed kind of education. Now, during the British colonial period, large number of immigrants such as the Indians and Chinese were introduced into the system. So now the complexity of, of creating an education system with young immigrants or new immigrants, uh, one must understand, if you're not uh, reflective, please take into consideration that the current day situation is so much different than it was in the early days. Because if I, I'm a I'm a I'm an Indian by birth, I mean Indian by some form of origin, but I'm Malaysian through and through. I'm the fourth generation Malaysian. My worldview is so much different from someone from India, and I believe it's true for many of my Chinese friends. So there is so much an assimilation assimilation that, that has taken place in the last, I guess, almost ninety to hundred years, that is so different when it, it in the 1800s. Because when in the 1800s, you were, when you were designing a school system, you actually had first generation immigrants who came to this country with their own worldview. 
and you have to create a school system where you incorporated uh, the European worldview, the Chinese worldview, the Indian worldview, and the native uh, or the Malay worldview. Things are so much better because over the years, people tend to sync, harmonize with each other, and you have a new, uh, more uh, consented perspective. So education system is so much easier to to regulate or to be part of or to to de design a curriculum for the current heterogeneous Malaysian population than it was in the 1800s. So what happened was uh, the Chinese came in and obviously they fought for the Chinese schools. The Indians came in and they wanted to learn in their own mother tongue. And then you had the British schools and then you were beginning to have the Malay schools. And how do you incorporate this? So in 1950, there were four initial proposals for developing the national education system. So the four uh, systems are, we start off with the uh, Barnes Report, which was written in the context that was favorable to the Malay uh, education system. Then you had the, the Ordinance Report, which is a modification of Burns Report. Then you had the uh, Fen Wu Report, which was written from an immigrant's, immigrant's perspective. And then finally, you had the prevailing report called the Razak report that comprises, uh, that compromised between the two paradigms that were contesting at that time. Now, the, in 1956, the Razak report was adopted as, by the Malaysian government as an educational framework for independent Malaya. The Razak report called for a national school system consists of Malay, English, Chinese and Tamil medium schools at the primary level and Malay, Malay and English medium schools at the secondary school level with a uniform national curriculum regardless of the medium of instruction. Malay medium schools would be known as the national while other language schools would be known as the national type. It went on to say that in the early years of independence, existing Chinese, Tamil and mission schools uh, accepted government funding and will be allowed to retain the medium of instruction on the condition that they adapt the national curriculum. Chinese secondary schools were given the option of adapting, the accepting government funding and changing and change into English national type schools or remain Chinese and private without government funding. Most of the schools accepted the change, although a few rejected and often and often sorry, a few rejected the offer and became uh, to be known as Chinese independent schools that you see today. In the 1970s, in accordance to the national language policy, the government begin, began to change the English medium primary and secondary type schools to Malay medium national schools. The language change was made gradual starting from uh, first year in primary then the secondary the second year and following so on the change was completed by the end of 1982 now the first now from a Malaysian perspective formalized schooling starts off at preschool uh, from the preschool perspective, there is no fixed rule, so I mean, anyone could run preschool for most part uh, in any way or form they ch uh, so choose. It is generally catered for five-year-olds. Uh, however, schooling can begin, begin as early as three years, three to six years old in kindergarten. And from a Malaysian perspective, we don't have a national preschool curriculum. It is generally run by private and independent uh, for, uh, providers for profit. And, and in many places in, in the heartlands of Malaysia, and in Sabah Sarawak particularly, many of these facilities are not available. So that's, that's, a, that's a very sad scenario at the moment. However, in the recent years, uh, great effort has been made by the government to introduce formal, uh, it's not uh, formal, but at least given opportunities in many schools to organize uh, preschool as part of the primary school system. So it will give many urban poor and rural folks an opportunity to participate in preschool. Uh, I think they have many organizations that provide 
preschools within the current primary school setting.